and to show the saving power of God. Hear, my people, and I will speak. Israel, I will testify against you. God, your God, am I. To your right, I will show the saving power of God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. For your burnt offerings are before me always. I take from your house no bullock, no goats out of your fold. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. For mine are all the animals of the forests, beasts by the thousand on my mountains. I know all the birds of the air, and whatever stirs in the plains belongs to me. To the young man, I will show the saving power of God. If I were hungry, I should tell you, not tell you. For mine are the world and its fullness. Do I eat the flesh of strong bulls, or is the blood of goats my drink? Why do you recite my statutes and profess my covenant with your mouth? Though you hate discipline and cast my words behind you? Today's gospel is very strange. Jesus heals two very savage men full of demons and they return to normal life. But in doing so, at the same time, a swine, a herd of pigs, saw him race down the bank and into the sea. Seven people rejoicing. 
they were afraid. They were afraid of seeing the demons be normal people and afraid because all their property had gone into the sea. It also tells us that the people he was visiting were Jews because Jews don't eat swine. And therefore the Jews would probably rejoice that the swine went into the lake because they regarded as dirty animals, not to be eaten. Their food was dark. You know, people say, why did the Jews think the animals were dirty? Well, when I was growing up in Ireland, pigs had to take for them in. And if you didn't cook pork properly, you could end up having a tapeworm inside your stomach and be very sick. So probably the Jews then wouldn't eat the swine because it causes illness and causes difficult among his people and that's why this then was not clean. You know, you have to look back at history to see why things were. So, but the people said they accepted Jesus, turned him away. When we see the good that God does in our world, there's also evil with it. And we're not to be afraid because goodness always overcomes evil. St. Paul tells us again, where evil abounds, goodness abounds the most. A lighted candle, a small lighted candle in the light of the darkness, and any goodness will always overcome evil. So don't be afraid of goodness. Don't be afraid of asking the Lord to do good things for us. Be at peace. And when we come to the Eucharist, we ask the Lord for that gift. The gift to be at peace. That we are at peace with the evil around us. To be at peace with our fellow man. To be at peace with the poor. To be at peace with the sinner. Not to judge. But it's a gift. And don't be afraid of the gift. Because God is with us. And when God is with us, when God is with us, goodness is always about us. So we don't be like the people. When they saw Jesus to turn them away, ask him to come into us. Ask him to help us to face the evil that's in the world. And that we face the evil by doing good ourselves. Christ, we give refreshed 
their spirit. We pray to the Lord. We pray for us who are gathered here this morning. May the Holy Spirit inspire us in works of peace, of justice, and charity. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all that may be part. We pray especially for Gary Horabar from his master's office and Gloria Parker, who recently deceased. May the angels welcome them and welcome those who travel us a life journey to paradise. We pray for the Lord. We pause. We pray for each other. We pray for the needs of each other and for the prayers that lie deep in our hearts. God our Father, you are the source of all that is good. We ask in your mercy to hear our prayers through Christ our Lord.
You are indeed holy, and be glorified for God the love and human grace. And who always walks with us in the journey of life. Blessed is he the Son, present in our midst. And when we gather by his love, when once with his disciples from now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And on the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the last supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when suffering was ended, he took the chalice. I give you thanks. I give you chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. For through him and with him and in him, O 
Oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all oh glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received us in life, O Lord, we pray, so that by to your lasting charity we may bear fruit at last forever and ever. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. 